So now that we have our helper class right here, let's try and use it. So what we're going to do first is initialize the helper class so we can actually start using it. Go to the very top and I'll just create it all the way in the top. I'll make a helper of the type helper, right? There we go. Now I'll initialize this guy right in the beginning. It's, um, it's, I'm going to use it pretty much anywhere anyway. So I'm just going to initialize it right here. Create a new helper. There we go. Now we have the helper class available. And that pretty much means that now we can actually start uh, firing and adding to the snapshot changes what we should actually use. Now we might end up using this with value changes later as well, so I'll keep it right here. Good. Let's scroll down a little bit. If we look at this describe right here, I've decided to call a service in the very first um, before each right here, so this is not a good place to make my test now. So we're going to make a new one right here, get products, uh, get product calls, or get products return value, let's call it that. Now this guy is going to test when we call get products, do we get the right uh, return value back? This guy is not going to call the before each before we start, so let's just get rid of that. Instead we're going to just get rid of these guys and make our first function right here, right? So I'm going to um, try and make a test right here where we just pass in or get a single product back and that should of course return only a single product in the end. So how do we do this? Well, let's try and jump to the top. We need to use our snapshot change right here. So we're going to override that before we actually call the get products. So this method right here, we're actually going to use the helper now to say get pro get action, sorry. And here we're going to pass in a single one right now. So that means that now when I use uh, my product service, so let's just say service dot get products dot and I subscribe to this, right? I should actually get back a single product. So it'll return a list of products right here. And we can just do a small test right here. Just say expect products.length to be one, right? A very, very simple test right here. Um, so now the goal is pretty much that we are calling right here. We're saying that instead of the snapshot changes returning an empty array, it's actually going to return a list of our actions right here with all this data right here. Now notice the data we're sending in is actually not a product. That's very important to notice. The data we're sending in is actually a payload uh, as an action that we're using from Firestore, right? So, but it does change into a list of products somehow. We'll figure that out in the next couple of lessons. But this is a very simple test just to figure out if we're actually up and running with the get products right here. So let's try and check out our, um, our actual window right here. And it seems if we go down, product service get products return value, it returns a single product. Well, let's just for the fun of it, add one more where we just try to test what if we try to send in uh, 10 products instead of one, just to try and see if that works. There we go. So we'll add this and we expect it to be 10 now. Let's just try and go back and see if we have another test. Now the goal is not to have as many tests as, as possible, but I'm, I'm right here, I'm just trying to show you guys how easy it is to kind of expand our tests right here. Okay, sweet. Now, what's actually exciting right here is to do one more test and that is to figure out that what I'm passing in right here is actually a product, right? Because you'll notice right here, the ID is out here. And then there's some kind of data right here. So there must be some kind of manipulation with the data for this to be a product. So I'll do one more test right here. I'll say if I pass in a single product right here, I expect that it should be a product. Return a single product. Get products, return single product with correct properties, right? Correct properties. There we go. So now that we've set up the function, let's try and use it. So we kind of expect right here that when we set up a single product right here, we expect to get something back. And let me just paste this in. So I expect that what I'm getting back is actually, I can expect the first product, since I only have a single product, I expect the first product right here should be the product with ABC0, ABC0, and DEF0, which is pretty much just what we should end up lining up right here. ABC0, ABC0, and DEF0 zero like this. So let's actually see if the test is running now. And it seems we have a failure. It seems that they're not the same. And that's probably because this is not the same object. It's actually two different places in memory. So what we'll do instead is we'll say instead of to be, we want them to equal each other to kind of say this object right here should have the same properties as this object right here. And let's just see if that helped. There we go. Now they equal each other. They're not the same objects, of course, because I just generated two different objects. I have the one that's in the helper and I've created an object right here. There are two different places in memory maybe, but they equal each other. They have the same information, both of them. Let's just, for the fun of it, change this to one just to make sure that it'll fail now. So we know that this actually works. 
And there we go, we failed because it shouldn't say ABC1, right? It should say ABC0. And there we go. Now we've just made a test that even though I pass in this gibberish payload doc ID data method, stuff like that, I do end up with an actual product array when I'm done running through my code right here and mapping the data with the pipe function. Perfect stuff. So that was one test. You can do a million other tests. I have a few more things and then I'll let you guys go. So have fun. See you next time.